Making a film is like gambling. Sometimes you make money back and sometimes you lose it. You invest your money in an idea, turn the idea into a script and the script into a finished film which is shown in the cinema. But will you get your money back or will you lose it? In its journey to the screen, a film will go through many different stages. This whole process begins and ends with one person, the producer. I think the role of the producer is as the kind of, the person who's in the middle of everything. Usually the one who finds the original idea for the film, gets a script written, finds a director, gets a cast together, raises the money to make the film, sees it all the way through, sees it all the way through to distribution and onto video. So you are the sort of, the entrepreneur who's in the middle of it. There's this barbed wire fence and there's the creative aspects are all over here and the management, financial, legal, compliance issues are all over here. Health and safety, all those other important things. And somebody has to join the two together and get you going forward in a way that both sides of the fence are happy with. For the director, it's really important that um, the producer can look at the bigger picture all of the time from day one, from the moment that the, the writer comes to the um, producer with the project, right through to the point where the director is visualising how the project is, is going to unfold. The producer's job is to protect the director and allow them to put their creative vision onto the screen. Um, it can sometimes be quite a tough relationship, um, but that's healthy and uh, they should be closest of allies. The producer's job is to make everything possible logistically. It's developing it, raising the money, making it, and then taking it to the marketplace. There are four blocks, not two as a producer. And you get any one of those blocks wrong, and the movie will be severely hurt if not terminally uh, get terminally ill. The first gamble on the road to success is choosing an idea and a script. So in agreeing to take this gamble, what are people looking for? In my view, what makes a good script is a good story well told for the screen. And by that, I mean a, a script that explores an idea that is important to the writer um, in a way that is simple and consistent and true. Well, all scripts start with, with a big idea or a question. If you're going to spend the hard hours and all the time writing a script, you better really care about it or have some interest in it. Because the other thing is all scripts, by the time they get made into films, they go through 12 drafts, 15 drafts. So what is the big idea behind this script? You know, what is... What is the writer really trying to make reference to, you know, in the current world or in my world? You know, how do I relate to what the, the writer has written? When I'm writing something for somebody else to direct, and I have done that before in television, um, I'm really looking to write something that's going to tantalise the, the director and inspire the director, and it's almost a blueprint. The script is a blueprint for the director to take on one step further. Um, and I imagine that when I'm working with a writer, that, that's also what I'm going to be looking for as a director. I'm going to be looking for something that inspires me, something whereby I can understand what the writer is, is trying to visualise and is trying to say, but that I can take one step further in many ways in order to get that message or that image or that idea or theme across to an audience. Whether you're making a smaller independent film or whether you're trying to make a big action film, you've got to care about the people that are in the film and you've got to be curious about their journey. You know, there has to be a beginning, middle and end. And you can tweak that and you can play with it, but ultimately, if you see a film and you don't feel like a character starts in one place and ends up somewhere else, you're bound to be unsatisfied. You have a script, but is it a good script? How can you tell? I suppose if you knew you were reading a hit script when you read it, you know, we would all be millionaires. Um, you have to rely on a combination of your instincts and your knowledge of the marketplace. Action! You've got your script. Now you need to put together the other elements of your film, which could also make the crucial difference between success and failure, the package.
Before filming begins, the producer and the director need to carefully plan who will be in their film, how they're going to make it, and with what production team. Once you've decided which film that you want to make, you've obviously got to get a screenplay written and you would work that and work that, so it might be 15 times you'd have it rewritten. When that's right, you get the key filmmakers on board, so you might have the director, some of the key crew. Um, then the other most important thing is to get, you get your budget set so you know how much it's going to cost you and you work out who's going to be in the cast. So that's what we in the business call a package because that is what enables um, any potential financier to make uh, a valid judgment about how this project will turn out. The actors are absolutely crucial, um, incredibly important for some films, very important for other films, that's it. They're always at least very important. The casting is absolutely critical to me. You know, the casting process um, goes side by side with the scheduling process. I really start looking at actors who I think could really bring a truthfulness to the dialogue. The script will need rewriting and polishing before it's ready to be transformed into its filmed performance. Script development uh, is something that I define as the process whereby the developer works with the screenwriter to find what is important to them in the script and helps them to make that meaningful to an audience. It can be um, just taking an idea and, and rearranging the order that things happen, or it can be the creation or elimination of main characters. It can be transposing a setting so that a film that was going to be shot in London is transposed to Toronto. It's very easy to just simplify a line or, um, or, or cut it out completely. So I suppose the writer's always sitting there in the back of your mind somewhere, but that's probably the same writer that's sitting there in the back of the director's mind anyway, that's, that's doing what's the very best for the project and the very best for, for the performances of the actors. So if the development process isn't right, in other words, the script is not attractive enough, the team you put together cannot, do not work successfully together and you don't realise their full potential, or indeed it's just a weak team to start with. Um, so uh, when you go out to raise the money, you're going to have problems and you're not going to get the best type of money. You hope that that story idea, plus that beautifully crafted script, plus those uh, unique people who've gathered together to make it, will actually attract the finance. Show me the money. <laughs> With the package put together, it's now time to get investors to put their money into your production. As a film producer in the UK, um, there are various different routes I can go for financing. I can go to television companies, Channel 4, BBC Films. Um, I can, if I'm making the film in a certain region, I can go to the regional film fund and see if they'll support. They'll certainly always support in terms of finding locations and finding local people who want to work on films. And then you have the other more common type of financing which requires putting together a group of potential financiers. Um, I think the record is, is somewhere up into the 50s uh, in terms of 50 different financiers. But in the main, it tends to be between three and ten. But what if the money can't be raised in the UK alone? Where else can producers go to find finance? Most British producers cannot look just to the UK for their finance, so they tend to look across both pieces of water, across the channel for what we call co-production deals, which is when producers in other countries come together with a British producer and together they finance and make the movie. It sounds very complicated to raise money from so many different sources. Surely it's easier to find just one funder. Uh, yes, it is easier at the beginning because with one financier you have one funding contract, one deal to make, you can concentrate on your film. Where it is difficult is anyone who puts up 100% of the money, whatever it says in the contract, controls that movie. When you do multi-partner, uh, what we call independent production, the producer uh, and or director are in charge because none of the partners own enough of the pie to control it.
So how does a producer decide where they will go to raise their funding? The package, if I can use that word, that has been put together will, in a sense, tell you where you should be going. You know that these particular financiers like the work of this particular director or like this kind of subject matter or that particular writer. Um, and balancing all those things together tells you uh, and that also tells you how much it's going to cost, which in a game will affect who you take it to. If it's going to cost not a lot of money, you are not going to take it to the US studios because that's not what they do for a living. Sometimes you need to be really clever and explain to people why they should be making that film. And if you can ring the right bells, then that then, then the thing gets made. There's not a lot of money out there to make film. Uh, I think that's that's sort of the biggest challenge that you know you're you're chasing after very little money, um, and there's so much competition out there. Um, I suppose the biggest challenge was to persuade uh, financiers that that my film was the film that they should invest money into this year or at that particular time. A key part of the production process is working out what will be filmed when. When I get a script and it's ready to go, the first thing I do in my head is I start breaking it down and, and look at, okay, what are the hardest scenes? <laughs> what are the hardest scenes to accomplish? And these might be hard because there might be visual, inf visual effects involved. They might be hard because they take place in uh, inhospitable surroundings, like, you know, maybe on a moving train at night or something, you know, which is very hard to shoot. So you find out what are the hardest scenes to shoot and you start building you know, that into your schedule and make sure you've got enough time for that and you prep for those scenes. Um, and then um, and then I start casting. It's just so important to the process to ensure that you have the right team around you. Um, and the right team doesn't necessarily always mean the people who love the script the best or the people who love the story or the ideas involved in the story the best. Um, but really it's about finding people who are on the same page as you when it comes to how you're going to tell that story. It's about looking at those words that you see on the script and seeing them in picture form. Um, and then filmmaking is really such a collaborative process that you have to then deal with each of your heads of department from the production manager to the makeup artists and the costume designers um, and your director of photography. Cinematographer is, you know, your right hand as a director on set because ultimately the cinematographer has to convey what you are hoping um, in your head, you know, he's seeing. But at the same time, you have to allow the cinematographer to have their input, you know. You might have read a scene as being not funny at all, and suddenly an actor will come in and play it in a way that's actually really funny, or a different kind of funny to what you thought it was. So things start opening up to you, and you, the script was always like this, and then all of a sudden, all these other tangents start appearing. The script itself will help the producer decide how much money they will need to get the film made. They need to construct the budget. All film is based on investment. There is a budget drawn up, which is what the film is going to cost, and then that has to be paid for by um, the, the film's finance plan. And so you will, like any other business, draw up a finance plan of how you are going to pay for the cameras, how you're going to pay for the film stock, how you're going to pay for the editing, the actors, the script, the locations, and so forth. And we have to look at the business plan as if each film were an individual business and work out how and why and what can you do to ensure that if the film isn't great, which often happens, you make the film for a level of budget that is commensurate with the level of income you think you can generate. I came into this industry and worked my way up in production. And one of the things I learned doing production was how to do a budget. And it's, it's, it's really easy. You break down the script into sections. You have cast, uh, location, props, extras. You fill in all the gaps as to how many cast, who the cast are. And you use this table to count up how many actors there are, to count up what the props are. And it, it's basically an analysis of the script. And then you use that to do your budget. The producer will divide the costs of making the film in two. 
one set of costs are called above the line and the other below the line. Conventionally, we, we talk about above the line costs and we talk about below the line costs. Above the line is basically the creative talent package involved in the film. So it's the script and whatever you've had to pay for that. It might involve paying for the rights to a novel. Um, a screenplay has been written from that. It's then the, uh, the producer and that, their team. It's then the director and his or her team, and it's your major actors. Above the line costs are basically uh, the costs of creating the story. In other words, money is paid to script writers, research for the script, um, uh, retainers, uh, uh, and then for what we call the above the line uh, cast and crew, which basically the director, producers, uh, writer, uh, and the, what we call the principal cast, which is at a minimum the two leads, but could be several more highly paid actors. The below the line involves a huge amount of very talented people as well, but in most cases those are not people who are actually driving the sales of the film, they are the people who are going to make it. Um, they start at the beginning of pre-production, they put together the shoot, um, you schedule it, you set up each day, you design it, you costume it, you photograph it. Even at this early stage of development, the production investors are already thinking about what might happen when the film is in the cinema. As an executive producer, when a producer brings a project to me, I want to know that he, the producer, he or she, has a very defined audience in mind and I often ask them to think about it in terms of their local cinema you know where, where do they see this playing in which screen do they see this as playing in a multiplex or do they see it as playing in an art house is this something that will only play in city centre sites or is it something that's going to be able to play literally in every cinema in the country the most important thing is to connect the idea of the project with the audience the decision as to which films to make relating to who's going to want to see them. That's your fundamental decision. If you get that right, everything in between the two is a sort of industrial pr process which you can make work. Um, if you get it wrong, then even though you might get the film made, it will never work. As a producer, you're the one person in the team whose prime consideration must be who are we making this for? If we're expecting them to watch it in the cinema, are they going to part with, well, up to 11, 12 quid these days? Uh, and will they do so in sufficient numbers to justify the cost of making this? You know, we always ask ourselves the question, you know, if it's a $20 million film, is there a $20 million audience? You know, the reality is you need to generate more than $20 million to cover a $20 million film. But just, it's that kind of discipline. Is there an audience out there for this size of project? Um, and often the answer is no, and at that point you have to either reduce the budget radically or not make the film. You also need to find something that the marketplace will understand, because actually if it's too wacky and if they've got no prototypes to judge it by, then you're going to be equally stuck. So you've kind of got to be definable without being formulaic, um, and I think you've got to be fresh without being completely way out. If you only make films assuming they're going to be great, you're going to be out of business very quickly because um, most films are not great. Most films are okay, some are good, very few are great, and quite a few don't register on the scale at all. The film producers are betting on one thing, that when the film is finished, people will pay money to see it. During the production process, the team are already deciding how the film will be marketed and sold. Marketing the film is a hidden cost that most producers and people in the public don't think of. They don't realize that if you're spending 5, 10, 15, 20 million dollars on making a film, that actually there's an additional 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50 million dollars to market it. And so you have to find a, a, a way of generating enough income to cover both of those costs. It isn't just about playing down your local multiplex, but it's in fact about the revenue streams that will occur in a global marketplace. This film will play in a huge number of countries over quite a long period of time. 
and it will play not only in cinemas but also on DVD, on television, pay-per-view, pay television. Does the film fall easily into a genre that is marketable? You know, is it a horror film? If so, you know, one knows that at certain times of the year you can put horror films out there with a decent marketing campaign and do pretty good business even if the film isn't great. And the ways that we look at minimizing the, uh, the risk that we have is in, you know, the first obvious ones are who are you putting in it? Do you have any marketable stars? Can you create a sense of need to see even if the film isn't fantastic? Um, and to do that, you, you use the tools that I talked about just now, genre, uh, movie stars, big director, um, high concept. Um, these are all the tools that we use. That's what marks the difference between Hollywood and the British film industry. The British film industry think, we've got it. We've got the budget. We've got the finance. Let's go and shoot the film. And that's it. And then they're there and they're on set and then they go and see the assembled film at a preview theatre and think, how am I going to sell this? In America, they think very differently because a film wouldn't be greenlit without knowing what is the release date of the film worldwide and how they're going to sell it in TV spots and with a poster and so forth. They are thinking about that audience from the get-go. And I think that that's where we need to change our thinking in the production community now. It isn't just about getting the film made. The most important thing is getting an audience to see it. But that's a whole different story.